the Assembly will hear an address by Her Excellency Maya Sandu, President of the Republic of Moldova. I request protocol to escort Her Excellency. On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome Her Excellency Maya Sandu, President of the Republic of Moldova, and to invite her to address the Assembly. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, Your Excellencies, it is with great pride that I once more stand before you at the General Assembly of the United Nations to represent the Republic of Moldova, a country on the front line of the fight for democracy. Today, Moldova stands stronger and more resilient than a year ago. We stand firm in our belief in a democratic future, and we stand firm with Ukraine as our neighbor continues to resist Russia's brutal invasion and attack on its sovereignty and way of life. We stand firmly for Ukraine's victory because when Ukraine wins, the free world wins. Now, more than ever, support for Ukraine must not diminish. Please continue supporting Ukraine. Ladies and gentlemen, Ukraine, Moldova, Europe, and the free world are facing an external assault on our values. But countries like mine haven't broken free from imperial chains only to be brought back into servitude. We push forward. We are not facing an imminent military threat, unlike our Ukrainian friends and neighbors. But every day, we are countering Russia's hybrid assault. Russia has teamed up with corrupt crooks to destabilize us. Their hybrid toolbox includes energy blackmail, support for separatism, cyber attacks, and disinformation campaigns. They also tried to overthrow our democratically elected government, but each time they failed. We know they will try again. In soon-to-be-held elections, they will attempt to undermine our citizens' ability to make their own democratic choice. This threat is not unique to us. Many countries in Europe and beyond our continent are feeling the sting of foreign interference in their democratic processes. This hybrid assault is conducted by those who oppose not just our democracy, but all liberal democracies. We must stay vigilant, and we must stand united. Distinguished audience, against all odds, we preserved peace across all of Moldova, including in the breakaway Transnistrian region, where Russian troops are stationed illegally and where concerns about human rights violations are deeply worrying. Our commitment to a peaceful resolution remains steadfast, and I call here today for the unconditional withdrawal of those Russian forces. In light of intertwined challenges, building Moldova's resilience has not been an easy task. Yet, we take heart in the fact that Moldova is not alone. Our friends and partners, the entire free world, stand with us. Building resilience means that Moldova has moved from relying solely on Russian gas to having a mix of energy sources and backup storage. We are also building electricity lines to Europe, investing in energy efficiency and pursuing renewable sources. The true measure of a democracy's success rests in its ability to deliver a better life and real economic benefits to citizens. Strengthening our economy as the war rages across the border is a daunting challenge, but we are determined. 
small and medium-sized enterprises can now access funds to grow. Digital public services are helping to cut red tape. The EU market is open to experts of our fruit and vegetables. Inflation is down to 10% from a peak of 35% last October. A major ratings agency has upgraded our outlook to stable. We are comprehensively reforming the justice system, redoubling our efforts to defeat corruption and organized crime. Part of this effort is reducing the malign influence of fugitive oligarchs who at one time captured our state. I'm grateful to many of you in this room for imposing sanctions on those individuals. The next critical step in this journey is to ensure that the stolen money is returned to the Moldovan people. As evidence of our commitment on corruption perception, as measured by Transparency International, we improved by 24 places in the past two years, our best score in a decade. On the Rule of Law Index, part of the World Justice Project, we have advanced by 14 places since 2020. Greater resilience will also come through enhanced transport links with Europe, vitally important given Russia's blockade of Ukrainian ports and the disruption of trade routes. We are upgrading roads and railways, and this modernized infrastructure will not only boost our trade and create jobs, but will support solidarity lanes for Ukraine, ensuring that its grain reaches the regions where it's needed most. And one day, these very connections will be aiding Ukraine's post-war reconstruction. As we build up defenses and resilience, Moldova is increasingly recognized as a contributor to regional security, a strong neighbor to Ukraine and partner to the EU in countering security challenges. But our commitment extends globally. Moldovan servicemen actively contribute to peacekeeping missions, including most recently in the United Nations Interim Force in Lebanon. Underscoring our commitment to the security of our continent, we hosted the European Political Community Summit last June, a summit that further cemented our place in the European family. Ladies and gentlemen, economic progress, improving security, and reinforcing our democracy are part of our journey towards membership of the European Union. Moldova's European aspirations have long been well known. Last May, 100,000 Moldovans rallied in Chisinau to reassert their commitment to democracy and to EU membership. Let me be clear. Moldova's EU membership is not just a political choice. It is the only way to protect our liberty, peace, and democracy. The enlargement of the EU is the sole path to ensure our neighborhood stays anchored in the free world and that we deliver better lives for our citizens. It would also demonstrate the Union's commitment to peace, the very reason the European Union was built. When it comes to membership, we believe in a fair and merit-driven process and have been doing our work diligently. With this in mind, I call on the European Commission and all EU members to support us. I extend this call beyond the EU borders to all the countries of the free world, especially those with well-established, robust democracies who have long reaped, reaped its benefits and understand its worth. The success or downfall of one democracy resonates globally. When one thrives, it inspires hope in others. When one falters, it risks a domino effect. Today, the fight for democracy anywhere is the fight for democracy everywhere. 
and in this interlinked fight for democracy, we will prevail. Thank you. On